Salutations, everybody. It is Manny here today, and we're talking about Greedfall again. Hooray! Now, if you're living under a rock, you may not know, but this week is Gamescom. That means new gameplay, new trailers, new information, more videos from yours truly, and above all else, SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom gameplay, THQ Nordic. Let it rain on me. Give it to me. Come on. Laughing Flossum, what's that? On the other end of the spectrum, though, we have... Greedfall, an RPG coming from spiders, developers of Bound by Flame and Technomancer. And I'm very, very excited for it, if you couldn't tell. So what I want to do is break down the latest information from a trailer that released during Gamescom, highlighting all the game's companions. But we're going to do things a little different than I normally do in my news updates instead of just breaking it down and giving my opinion. I'm going to sort of do that along the way because we're going to be combining an article from Escapist where they released information about companions earlier in the week and then taking from the trailer and using both of those news pieces to yield brand new information. So let's get started with the Escapist article, then we'll go into the video, dissect the entire trailer, and then after that, we will go back to the Escapist article, which I'll have linked in the description down below. Let's get started. Players will be joined in Greedfall by five party members, one from each of the game's varied factions. How their conflicting concerns are handled will determine which of them are still your friends by the story's end, as well as which of the game's four main endings you'll receive. Having them with you for their own factions can be very useful, Rousseau revealed in an interview with The Escapist. They will have more information than the others, and they can help you have all the information needed to make the right choices. If you visit the governor of an opposite faction with a companion that is obviously an enemy, it will lead to some bad diplomatic reactions. Now, I like this. I think this is great news, but I also thought it was a bit of a shoo in a little obvious, if I dare say, because it's like, yeah, it's a faction-driven storyline, and each companion is allied with a faction. Of course, if you go to the same faction as that companion, they should bring new information, but I'm glad they're emphasizing it. I'm glad they're making sure we know what to expect with this game. And also, I learned that this game is made by 20 people, so... I'm a lot more impressed than I already was. Now let's get into that beautiful new trailer. What we're gonna do here is break down each companion individually, starting off with Kurt. Kurt is a loyal master of arms and a mercenary of the Queen Guard Guild, the trailer describes. He's a great frontline warrior, and the companion description that each of them has in their own inventory menu says that he's a melee combat master and can wear heavy armor. Now, I think the emphasis on armor in this is very important because you'll notice some companions don't wear armor. Meanwhile, some can actually wear armor. And I think that's very neat because then their combat skills differentiate and their play styles are also different and they can feed off of yours or fill in the void on what's missing for you. Next is Afra, the talented scientist from the Bridge Alliance. She specializes in ranged weaponry, such as rifles and explosive vials. The game actually makes an interesting suggestion for her in her companion description, saying to protect her from enemies who get within melee range of her to maximize the potential. I personally really like this because what it means is that you sort of have to watch over her, but she could be one of the most deadly companions because she could pick enemies from afar. And I really, really like that emphasis on having to take enemies off of her sort of peel because then do you start to build yourself as a tank because you want to soak the damage for Afra so she can do more for you. It's a cool thought. Next is Siora, someone who I think personally will be a fan favorite. She is a Tier 4D native. For those who don't know, Tier 4D is the name of the brand new continent that you are exploring and she is a native of said continent. She fiercely protects the people's rights there because they are the ones who are having their lands practically invaded and she can use light blades and ranged elemental magic, I think because she's sort of a hybrid and also her very nature as a character and the focus that they've given her in all the trailers seems to emphasize that she will likely be a hot pick for a lot of folks out there. I'm personally very interested in having her in the party because I want to have a native's perspective on this brand new continent I will be exploring. Next is Petrus. He is a missionary of Ta Lame, who has a remarkable way of words and is fatherly natured, which masks his deep-rooted ambitions. Now, that's not my own writing. Once again, this is all coming from the trailer, and I think that's important to note because that's the game creators suggesting that this man's up to no good underneath it all. He's, he's pushing his own agenda despite acting like he's concerned for you, so it'll be interesting to see how he turns out. 
he can fight from a distance as well as up close thanks to his ability to wear armor. So once again, another hybrid selection. You have a lot of options here for whichever type of playstyle you personally want to pursue. While I think a lot of the others involve you playing in a very specific manner to make sure that they don't get harmed in the process. So let's move on to the next companion. That being Vasco, he is the last one. He is the captain of the Sea Fairy Knots. I believe that's what it's called. That's what it sounded like in the trailer and I could not find it in writing. He is a more secretive, closed off party member and the trailer states that he will open up after his companion quest line. The description of Vasco is that he is a duelist whose extraordinary agility compensates for his lack of protection. So once again, another companion cannot wear armor. He also knows how to handle guns with great ease. So he's agile and he can attack from a distance. Now, one thing you may have noticed if you watch the trailer, as well as some of the descriptions I offered, is that each of these characters has a unique and personal companion quest but the trailer mentions that if you ignore them for too long, it may cause them to leave the party. Each has their own story and unique personal quests. Ignoring them for too long may even cause them to leave the party. Now this is an interesting developmental choice. I wanna say I don't like it because I don't think it's true. And I also feel like that's something that I may end up liking more as I play it out. But some of the danger there is that what happens if you progress in the game a little bit and I don't want the game to give me flashing warning signs. I want to get immersed, so I don't want the game to constantly warn me. But I just worry that, for example, you'll think you're getting to a point in the game where you're just kind of progressing along normally. And then all of a sudden your companion betrays you and reacts in a strange manner and leaves the party. Uh, I just get worried, for example, that people can get caught off guard there. I love the idea that companions can leave parties and that they react to some of your decisions that are made, but also I don't want to be forced into that companion quest. I would like it to be there if I want to elevate my relationship there with the companion, but I want them to leave because maybe we're not on the best of terms and they don't agree with the decision I made. And because our relationship isn't that good, then they leave. That's a lot more organic than, hey, you didn't complete quest X. That means that person is going to leave. Now, one of the reasons behind this decision may be because for developers, when you think of it this way, if you have too many what ifs in your decision making, for the game, you start to make a lot of that very vague, almost fake choices that don't really have impact on the world. But if you wanna have actual impact and you have a short checklist of things that can have impact and a short list of triggers for said impact, I think it makes it a lot easier on a developmental team, especially if it's only 20 people like I mentioned. So I understand why they wanna condense that a little bit. We'll see if it's as simple as I worry it may be or if it's actually a lot more expansive and something that happens organically. The trailer also highlighted that companions react to conversations. One is of Siora trying to clear up a mess seemingly your character had made with one of the natives in the area. My son, it is clear this woman has no intention of helping us. I ask you to forgive these foreigners. They do not know our customs. And this interjection that I saw in the trailer really brought back that vibe that old Bioware did. And actually, funny enough, Spiders is saying that this game's goal is to fill in the void Bioware has left, which is a bold claim, if you are me. Because you guys know, I love KOTOR. I love Jade Empire. I love Dragon Age Origins. Like, those are some of my top three games ever. These are fantastic games from my favorite developer in a time period ever. Okay, specifically the time period part. Okay, I don't want anyone thinking I'm out here loving Dragon Age, Inquisition, and Anthem. Hell no. I like old school Bioware, I like to call it. They were awesome. And they're the reason why games like Anthem mattered so much to people and why it failing really was a big deal. But point being is that them saying we want to fill in the shoes of what Bioware used to do. Okay, okay, I will be the judge of that. Now let's hop back into some information from The Escapist to wrap it all up. Romance will also be an option in Greedfall with four out of five of these companions with same-sex options for both men and women. Rousseau is quick to cut off any objections on the grounds of pseudo-historical inaccuracy. Doing a historical game and allowing same-sex romance was a real question. I want to have some because I think it's important to players that we have this, she explained. Spending some time to read history about sailors at the time and some real native people from different regions of the world. Some of these people were allowing same-sex marriage at the time and sailors were able to marry on the ships. I think this is great. Representation's great. Inclusivity is great. So I don't see any reason why not. And also for the pseudo-historical accuracy, this game's very fantasy inspired. The only thing that's really historically inspired is of course, as I mentioned to the point ad nauseum, is some of the colonial era clothing. But 
I think that's where it stops. So I don't know why they are too worried about historical accuracy and have to get on the defensive about it. I think it's very good that they're being inclusive in that way. And that's once again, one of the highlights of old school Bioware was how they handled romance. They did a very excellent job with it and they created some incredible scenes and made a lot of gamers happy with what they did there, whether it was for the lols or it felt good on the inside. They felt represented. They felt like a person understood them. That stuff's important. So I'm glad that Spiders is aiming really high for this one. Anyway, that's all the information I got for you, ladies and gentlemen. Greedfall is just a mere few weeks away. I put in the review copy request. Fingers crossed I can have you guys covered with guides and fun little videos. And of course, ultimately, what I want to get back to more than anything is official reviews. What we did over the summer with Marvel and Dragon Quest Builders, those post-launch reviews, that's not what we do here. You guys know we're better than that. So let's see if we can get something going with Greedfall. Fingers crossed on that. And I thank you guys so much for supporting these videos, and I'll catch you guys next time. Be sure to fire away in the comments down below. What do you think about the companions? Other than that, follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook. Those links are in the description down below, along with my Patreon. Do consider supporting that as it fuels all the content I create here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.